The RS2 gimbal is DJI's evolution of the workhorse Ronin-S. This new version is packed with improvements to the quality of the gimbal, ease of use, and it has new features. The RS2 is 20% more powerful while reducing the weight by 25%. And you can tell the difference right when you pick it up compared to the Ronin-S. Some of my favorite improvements are the full color touchscreen that displays settings and allows you to change settings, or even select an active track target if you have the Raven Eye transmitter. In this video, we're gonna go over my top 10 tips and tricks I've come across while using the RS2, along with some shortcuts and additional thoughts at the end. So let's get right into it. My first tip for the RS2 is to properly balance, calibrate, and use the gimbal modes. This is true for all gimbals, but just because the motors are stronger than the Ronin S doesn't mean you're gonna have some magic bullet that will smooth out all shakes from your footage. You're going to wanna calibrate your gimbal after swapping lenses or cameras to get the best results. You can check your gimbal balance by swiping from the right on the touchscreen, going to more, and then going to gimbal auto check. This will go through the auto check and tell you if your balance is good or need some improvement. An easy mistake to make while setting up your camera and then calibrating the gimbal is adding a small accessory or something that throws your balance off. Your motors will have to work harder and your footage might not be as smooth as it possibly could. And since this gimbal has a ton of accessories, it's an easy mistake to make. My next tip is to get familiar with the layout system on the touchscreen. You don't need the app for small changes anymore and all of the settings you need are right on the back of that screen. It's also nice that the gimbal displays information like when the gimbal is asleep or in sport mode, etc. The original Ronin S had some LED lights that would show you what mode you're in, but that's about it. If you've ever picked up someone else's Ronin S before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Trying to figure out what modes they used for M1, 2, and 3 was a nightmare. Maybe you had the tilt axis, but it was really fast or something like that. A lot of this is alleviated with the touchscreen on the back because you can go to the predefined modes easily and see what the motor strengths are from there. If you have to use your gimbal in a situation where you're still getting tiny shakes like filming from a boat or a car, the super smooth option for increased motor strength to hide those little jitters is really something you should check out. DJI recommends using the lens strap and the lens mount while using super smooth mode. They want you to have your lens properly secured to the camera and the gimbal because of the increased motor strength. And if you're using your gimbal on the side of a car or in a boat, it's probably a good idea to have that lens mount and strap on the gimbal anyways, just to not really put a lot of stress on your uh, lens mount of your camera. I use the Super Smooth briefly in my testing, but I haven't used the gimbal in any harsh locations that had a lot of those tiny little shakes. For what it's worth, I was using Super Smooth in normal shooting environments, so I didn't really need the lens strap, uh, and I used it, and the increased motor stiffness was noticeable, but I think you're gonna get a lot more benefit of those little tiny jitters if you are using something like they recommend that super smooth mode for. My next tip is to customize your dial functions to change your settings even faster. The RS2 has a front dial on the front of the gimbal above the trigger, and you can program this to do different things based on your settings. You can control the focus motor, camera focus, adjust the ISO or aperture, or you can do the roll access like I have set here. You can adjust the dial speed in increments of 5 all the way up to 100. The joystick doesn't control the roll axis at all, so using the front dial to control the roll axis is a great option here if that's something that you need. These settings all depend on your camera's ability to interact with the gimbal and what cable you're using. You can find a link to the full compatibility list that is updated in the description below. DJI said they're adding more cameras all the time, so listing them in this video probably wouldn't do it that much justice. The next tip is to know all of the gimbal modes and speeds. There's nothing more frustrating than getting your gimbal out getting a idea for a shot, and then your gimbal just isn't acting the way you're wanting it to. The RS2 also has some new modes that you may not know about. I'll quickly go over the gimbal modes, and uh, you have to drink water every time I say the word axis. Prepare to be hydrated. PF is pan follow, which allows you to pan but locks the tilt and roll axes. PTF is pan and tilt follow which locks the roll axis only, but you can tilt and pan the camera. FPV mode allows all axes to move 
and it follows the direction that you're pointing the gimbal. Custom allows you to enable or disable different axes. 3D Roll 360 is the one where your gimbal goes into the flashlight mode and you can spin the world around the roll axis. This locks the pan and the tilt axis. Portrait mode also puts the gimbal into flashlight mode and allows you to film portrait style videos. The pan, tilt, and roll axes are locked on the joystick and the dial. If you swipe from the left of the screen, you'll also be able to see the time lapse, track, panorama, and the new time tunnel mode as well. The time tunnel mode is a 360 rotating time lapse on the roll axis. While using the gimbal, we can also press the front trigger to lock all motors and keep your camera in place. My next tip can be a video on its own, but if you use DJI drones or cameras in the past, you've probably used active track at some point to follow subjects around. By using the RavenEye with our RS2, we can use that same technology in the gimbal world. Active track is one of my favorite features, but it's not quite perfect yet. The active track seems to have best results when there is enough light and contrast to pick up the object to track. If there isn't enough light, the gimbal might not pick up the target or it might not be able to react to a moving object in the dark. I was tracking some objects around my house for this test footage and the exposure was a little too low and my active track would expand the original selection and sometimes it would just select the wrong object right next to it. Adding more light seemed to give me better results. You can also active track without using your phone by swiping down on the screen on the back of the gimbal and using the trigger once on the front to activate the subject in the center of the screen to track. The beauty of the RavenEye system is that it uses your camera's feed to move the gimbal and track subjects. In the past, we had to use a smartphone to track subjects and it would only work as long as the cameras were properly aligned and they had similar focal lengths. There was a lot of setup and the hardware really just wasn't quite there yet, but with the RavenEye, we can track objects regardless of focal length because we're using the camera's feed to track the objects. If you're not using the RavenEye, be sure to disconnect it though, because the RavenEye has a battery of its own and it charges when it's plugged into your gimbal. So if you're using the RavenEye, keep it plugged in and that's fine, but your battery life will be a little worse. So if you're not using the RavenEye, there's no reason to have worse battery life. So be sure to unplug the RavenEye while you're not using it on your gimbal. The RavenEye takes about two and a half hours to charge and you can use it for about three and a half hours before the battery runs out. Or you can keep it attached to your gimbal and as long as your gimbal has power, your RavenEye will be powered as well. My next tip has to do with using active track at different focal lengths. The wider your focal length, the higher your active track speed can be. For example, for a 12 millimeter lens, you can have the speed at 30 because the frame is so wide, the object takes a long time to move around that frame. And it can be faster without being distracting. But a 65 millimeter lens, DJI recommends that it should be around a speed of eight. This makes sense that you don't wanna have your camera whipping around all over the place at 85 millimeters. This would be really distracting and you would probably lose your target. So if you're filming at longer focal lengths and your active track is going all over the place, that probably means your speed is too high and backing it down will give you better results. Also, if you're using the RavenEye, you can see a live view of your camera using the Ronin app. You can even change some settings and turn on peaking and all kinds of cool stuff. So checking out the Ronin app if you have the RavenEye is something to look into. And speaking of the Ronin app, there are a couple of cool features in there, like enabling the virtual joystick and fine tuning those settings. Usually I write off virtual joysticks and those smartphone controls because they're just difficult to use. But after taking some time and making some adjustments uh, to the gimbal settings on the app, it's actually kind of nice to film with some of those to get some stationary shots. A big benefit of using the virtual joystick rather than the joystick on the back of the gimbal is that you're not touching the gimbal and bumping into it. This is really important for macro shots. The ability to place your gimbal down and remotely move the camera is pretty awesome. If you've ever wanted to film macro shots with a tripod, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So having a smooth gimbal do that work for you really makes your life a lot easier. Another great feature of the RS2 is that you can use the included quick release plates to quickly remove your camera from the gimbal, get some handheld shots or swap a battery, and then attach your camera to the gimbal again without needing to rebalance your entire setup. 
When putting the Arca Swiss plate on for the first time, make sure you slide it all the way over and balance your camera from there. So if you need to take your camera off, you can slide your camera all the way off and push it all the way back onto the plate. If you initially have your camera like three quarters or halfway on that Arca Swiss plate and just lock it down, when you take your camera off, you'll also have to perfectly align it to where it was when you first balanced the camera. So if you slide it all the way over, it will always be perfectly balanced whenever you go to put your camera back on the gimbal. I learned this from experience and my Arca Swiss plate was just a little bit off when I locked it down. So it was secure on the gimbal, but the quick release plate, when I went to put it back on after I swapped a battery, the, my gimbal was no longer in balance. So that's an easy mistake if you're kind of running and gunning and moving quickly, but just make sure to always slide the plate all the way in on your quick release plate. My next tip for the RS2 is to lock your screen while you're filming. The touchscreen on the RS2 is in a great location if you're filming with the handle and you're not really gonna touch it by accident, but I am a big fan of using the dual grip handles and I haven't been able to test this yet because the switch grip handles aren't available and they're sold out everywhere, but they do mount really close to the touch screen. Since the screen is so close while you're using those handles, you could accidentally touch the back of the screen and go into a setting or change something that you didn't anticipate on changing. It's really easy to lock the screen and you can do this by tapping the power button once and to unlock, tap the power button again. It's really simple and it can save you from unexpectedly pressing the screen. So those are my tips for the RS2, and here are some helpful shortcuts that are just nice to have in your back pocket while you're using the gimbal. Press the power button once to lock and unlock the screen. Press the power button twice to enter sleep mode. Press and hold the front trigger to lock the gimbal. Tap the trigger twice to recenter the gimbal. Press the trigger three times to enter selfie mode. Half press the camera control button to autofocus your camera if you're using a camera control cable. Full pressing will obviously start or stop your recording. You can switch between three user profiles by using the M button, or if you press and hold the M button, you can enter sport mode. To lock sport mode and not have to hold the M button down, you can press and hold the M button and double tap the front trigger. Press the M button twice to enter portrait mode. Press the M button three times to enter 360 roll mode. Press and hold the M button and the front trigger at the same time to initiate an auto calibration. This is nice if you don't want to dig through the menu settings to get to the calibration. A few more miscellaneous and opinionated tips here. Uh, disable selfie mode. This will be a problem if you're out shooting and you go to recenter the gimbal while you're filming someone and you accidentally press it one more time and then the gimbal spins around to you in, in selfie mode. Uh, it's weird while you're out filming other people and that happens. I've had it happen to me before and it's just awkward. So I just disable that right out of the gate. I also enable silent mode to remove the chimes from the gimbal. Uh, for example, when the gimbal is turning on, I'm just a big fan of turning off all sounds on all cameras at all times. <laughs> Another thing to be careful of is your cable management here. If I had the 3D focus and the camera control, that would be even more wires. So if you're out and you're filming something, more wires means more opportunity to snag on something. Um, I haven't had any issues of wires catching on the drone itself, or the drone, the gimbal itself. But if you're out and you're filming something and you're putting your gimbal between something and doing like a reveal, like a pull out shot or a push in, it's really easy to snag one of these wires and pull something out and risk damaging your port and ruin the shot. So being very mindful of routing your cables correctly, like there's not very much cable management to do, but routing your cables and being aware of your cables while you're filming is something to be aware of. I don't really use the 3D roll 360 or the portrait modes, so I opted to turn them off in the Ronin app, and you can do this under the status from the main screen to just prevent your gimbal from going into these modes. These are things that I turned off right away when I got this gimbal, and if for some reason I need to enable them in the future, it's a pretty easy checkbox, but sometimes having less features on something will actually make you more productive. And if you're not gonna use something, it's a pretty good idea to just turn it off and not use it. This was a pretty dense video, so comment below and let me know which tip you enjoyed the most. 
And if you learned anything when you were out filming with your RS2 or RSC2, uh, comment down below and let me know. I love learning things about new tech and this is so new that I'm constantly learning new stuff all the time. So if you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other videos and share it with a friend. If you didn't enjoy this video, share it with someone you don't like. Thanks for sticking around to the end and I'll see you in the next one.